Satan is Satan is always there. He's always waiting for us to go back and tinker with those things that he knows we deal with, but we have not completely mortified. He's like that uh that 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 lion that's looking for that prey, that sheep that just is all by himself. The flock is heard in one way, but you got this one that's just lacking and, 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 and being a, a separatist. As so much the more as you see the day approaching. In the beginning of the classes, we can see the time approaching. We can see the end is near. So we should be exhorting each other to get it right. We should be in consistent, constant prayer three times a day. Like Bishop say, study, pray, apply. So today's title of the class is The Depths of Satan and Chinks in Our Armor. All right. The Depths of Satan and the Chinks in Our Armor. This class has been prompted because we know we all we come into this truth. A lot of times we don't go through anything. A lot of times we are uh, all the time. We are chipping off ways of the world. And it's, it's there's things weighing on us that we have yet to purge. And sometimes Satan, he's able to find that that chink in that armor slip right in and cause complete havoc. So today's title is The Depths of Satan and the Chinks in Our Armor. Didn't get, this class isn't quite finished yet. I'm definitely going to be finishing it up, probably revising and come back on and do it again. But we're going to hit some uh, key points today. Uh, Lord's will, brothers and sisters, take something from it. Let's start with Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. It's the book of Romans chapter 15, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, mm -hmm. that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. So we read this all the time. It's one of the first scriptures that I always start off with because we should be getting our hope, our inspiration, our guidance, everything throughout our day as we move throughout this earth should be an inspiration from the scriptures. We should be moving and learning to uh, inculcate these things within our spirits so that we can move according to the spirit of God. Read it one more time. For whatsoever things were written aforetime. Says what these things that was written aforetime in the past from our from our ancestors. Come on. Were written for our learning. It was written for our learning. Coming out of America, a lot of times we it is hard to uh ward off some of the evil that we have learned here in America. Sometimes it becomes a second nature, a, a thing that you just automatically revert back to. And sometimes because you're not around the right people, you don't even see it. It says whatsoever well, things written aforetime was written for our learning. Come on. That we through patience. Through patience. Come on. And comfort. And of, comfort. We're supposed to have patience and receive comfort. Come on. Of the scriptures uh -huh. might have hope. This is what's going to give us hope. All right. So from there, we're going to go to uh, First Peter's. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 7. Hold on, let me get there with you. All right, go ahead. The book of 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 7. But the end of all things is at hand. So we clearly can see that. The end of all things is at hand. We, these are the last days. We've all heard grandmama and great grandmama and speak about, oh, we're in the end of the world. Well, we on the earth today, Especially in this truth, we can look at the signs of the time that Christ told us to watch for, and we can clearly see that the end of all things is at hand. Read it again. But the end of all things is at hand. Come on. 
Be ye therefore sober. Be clear minded. And we're going to hit that a few times uh, over the next few minutes for this class. It says, Be ye therefore sober, meaning be clear minded. Come on. And watch. And watch. Unto prayer. And watch unto prayer. We got to pray. We got to watch. We got to spar, like Bishop has taught us to do. Study. Pray and apply these scriptures. Why? Because we are in the end of days. These are the last days spoken of. All right. From there, let's go to uh, Romans. Jump to Romans chapter 13 and start at verse 11. It's the book of Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. Come on. And that knowing the time uh -huh. that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. Come on. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. And we read, so uh, none of these scriptures are foreign. We read these things all the time. I'm Bishop can actually say the Bible is redundant. You know, over the last 10 years, the Bible has been, been, been repeatedly, these scriptures have been repeatedly beating our brains over and over and over. So we're not reading nothing that's foreign, nothing that brothers haven't heard. You know, maybe if you're just coming into this truth, you're just starting to get an understanding of the life that you should be living, the walk that you should be striving to walk and, and, and make your path towards. So these things may be kind of fresh to your ear. But the Bible is a redundant book. It's constantly repeating the same thing to us, the same rebellious people over and over again. Read it one more time. And that knowing the time. We can see the times that we live in, just like we read in the previous chapter. The end is near. And that knowing the time. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. And now it is high time to come up out of the stupor that we've been in for over 400 years in this country. Captivity after captivity. But even though this is the worst one, our people are in a great stupor. We're in a, in a gross darkness that we have yet to, ca to crawl out of. And all praises to the most high with this truth being pushed across the earth the way that it is right now. A lot of our brothers and sisters are starting to wake up. We're starting to realize that we have been in gross darkness for over 400 years. It says, knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, read. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now, during our parents' time, grandparents' time, when they was reading this, they had a sense of this knowledge. But now we can see the salvation of the people that have been oppressed on this earth the people that have been downtrodden, the people that have been brought to the lowest of low and living in the midst of sin. Our salvation is nearer now than we ever believed. Read on, verse 13. Verse 13. No, no, no. Read, read down, verse 12. Verse 12. The night is far spent. Come on. The day is at hand. That day is at hand. Read. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us cast off the works of darkness, sin. Come on. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on that armor of light. That armor of light. Remember today's class is the depths of Satan and chinks in our armor. We got to put on that armor of light. But what is that light? What is that light that we should put on? Give me that in Proverbs real quick. Proverbs 663. It's the book of Proverbs chapter 6 verse 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. Read it again. For the commandment is a lamp. And the law is light. The commandment is a lamp and the law, the laws of God. The commandments is the lamp and the laws of God is that light. Come on. And reproofs of instructions are the way of life. So the commandments in these, this law is our reproof. It reproofs of what? Read that again. And reproof of instruction. The reproof of instruction. Are the way of life. Is the way of life. Go back to that in Romans tw Romans 13. Read that in verse 12 again. It's the book of Romans chapter 13 verse 12. The night is far spent. Mm -hmm. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. Uh -huh. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Not in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envy. Read. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ. Put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, which is that armor of light, which is the commandments. Come on. And make not provision for the flesh uh -huh. to fulfill the lust thereof. This is where we fall short at with the chinks in our armor. A lot of times we don't we 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 examine ourselves, but we don't really deal with those internal things that we know that nobody else really knows about. 
We don't deal with those eternal things that we know is plaguing us or that we are susceptible to fall into. And then Satan finds his way right up under that armor and slides right in because we didn't deal or we don't deal with that specific thing. Read verse 14 again. Verse 14. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ uh -huh. and make not provision for the flesh. Uh -huh. To fulfill the lust thereof. We have to not make provisions, make not provisions for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. We all know what we're battling with, things that we're dealing with, but we push kind of push it to the side. We 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 happily uh acknowledge those things that the majority of people deal with, but we will push to the side the things that we know people don't really know that we deal with. These are the chinks in our armor. These are the, the 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 chinks that Satan finds, he just sit back and he waits. You know, he waits because when you come into this truth, you're on fire. Most of us anyway. Most brothers and sisters are on fire. Y'all going through any trials, you you kind of just chipping away, purging, you know what I'm saying? But Satan, give me that go, give me that in uh what's that? Uh Matthew 4, Matthew 4 13. When you first come in, Satan is Satan is always there. He's always waiting for us to go back and tinker with those things that he knows we deal with, but we have not completely mortified. Read that real quick. Uh, was it? Is it Luke 4? Uh, for a season? Yes. Yeah. It's the book of Luke, chapter 4, verse 13. Yeah, that's what I want. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, uh -huh. he departed from him for a season. For a season. That's what happens with... The majority of us, with all of us, Satan departs just for a season, but he's always lurking in the background to see what you're willing to meddle with, to see what how far you're willing to go because of those chinks in our armor. Let's get uh first Peter's. First Peter's five and eight. It's the book of First Peter, chapter five, verse eight. Be sober. Be what? Be sober. That's what we read over in chapter four and verse seven. Here it is again. Be sober. Be clear-minded. Come on. Be vigilant. Uh huh. Because your adversary, the devil, Satan, as a roaring lion, as a what? As a roaring lion. Come on. Walketh about seeking whom he may devour. It says he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Devour us how? Through the chinks in our armor. He slithers and slides his way in, and before we know it. We 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 we've we've taken we've taken a, a, a arrow or something to, to to the gut, you know what I'm saying? These are the the members we gotta mortify. These are the chinks. These are the 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 situations we gotta acknowledge and we gotta sew up because the depths of Satan is the depths of our mind. He knows exactly how far we're willing to go. He knows exactly what tools to use to 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 make a chink or to penetrate a certain part of our armor. To cause you to fall, you know, and if you don't think that's you, you're just fooling yourself. All right. If you think that your armor is sealed tight, then you're just fooling yourself because everybody knows what they're dealing with. Everybody knows what they have to conquer. And that is the condition of the battle. We must we must conquer it. All right. Read that again. Uh, five and eight. Be sober. All right, be clear minded. Be vigilant. Read. Because your adversary, the devil. As a roaring lion, uh -huh. walketh about, it says, it says he walketh about. We're going to read that. We're going to read that in a minute in Job. He walketh about. Come on. Seeking whom he may devour. He, he's like he, he's like that, uh, that, that, that lion that's looking for that prey, that sheep that just is all by himself. Their flock is heard in one way, but you got this one that's just lacking and in, 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 in being a, a separatist. You know what I'm saying? And that's the one that is going to get devoured. That's the one that's going to get ran down, hunted down, and he's going to become food. So that's how Satan is. He's looking for food. He's looking for those of us who slip because we're not being aware. We're not vigilant like the scriptures tell us to. All right? Let me get um, Luke. Let's jump to Luke chapter 21 and verse 34. Luke 21 and 34. That's why the scripture said we got to be sober. We got to be sober-minded, meaning clear-minded. You know what I mean? This sober-minded is not just going into not drinking. It's going into being clear-minded and clear-thinking, having a, a, a mindset that's clear towards sin and the ways that Satan brings things to us that could cause us to fall, that could cause chinks in our armor. 
Uh, Luke 21, 34. Book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 34. Mm -hmm. And take heed to yourselves. This is Christ. He's warning us to be watchful. He says what? Take heed to yourselves, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting. With too much abundance, too much uh, surfeiting, meaning it's an, uh, an inappropriate amount. Come on. And drunkenness. Uh-huh. And cares of this life. So sir, that surfeiting is going into the cares of this life. The 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 overindulging uh, uh, in this world and the cares of this life. Come on. And so that day come upon you unaware. Because why? Because we're too bitterly busy meddling, surfeiting in drunkenness, surfeiting in, in, in or, or giving heed to the things of this world versus the things of, of heaven. We've, we've, we've not conformed our mind to the ways of the Bible 100%. We got to sell all the way out when it comes to this Bible. That's what we got to do. And a lot of times, we're only about 85%, 90%, 95%, you know. So when we're not 100%, the ways of this world, the cares of this world take us over. Read on, verse 35. Verse 35, for as a snare. As a what? As a snare. As a trap. Shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth? Read on. Watch ye therefore. Christ says you better watch. Come on. And pray always. And pray always. Read. That ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things. He says that we may be accounted worthy. We got to watch, pray. We got to be sober. We got to be vigilant that we may be able to escape. Come on. All these things that shall come to pass. Uh -huh. And to stand before the Son of Man. This is what's going to. Uh, refine us and give us the opportunity to stand before the Son of Man in that day, to stand before Christ without fear, without the worry of did I give it my all? Did I really apply? Did I ward off all of the, did I sew up or mend all of the chinks in my armor to be accounted worthy in this day right here? That's what's going to matter because Satan is always lurking and waiting to bring us down. Now I'm going. Uh, we're going to switch modes, and we're just going to. I'm gonna just hit a few scriptures showing. Go back to that in First Peter uh, five and eight, real quick, and then we're going to get a few examples of uh, Satan just lurking to and fro in the earth. Read that in uh, First Peter five the, and eight. The book of First Peter, chapter five, verse eight. Be sober. Be what? Be sober. That clear minded. Come on. Be vigilant. Uh huh. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about. Seeking whom he may devour. Says he walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Now give me that in Job. Job chapter 1 and verse 6. Because in the bishop, they went over this. They went over Job a few times. We understand that Job is a parable. We're not going there today. We're just getting an example out of uh, Job showing that First Peter 5 and 8, when Satan walketh about seeking whom he may devour, he said it himself. It's written right here. Read that. It's the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 6. Now, there was a day when the sons of God came the who? to... The who? The sons of God. The sons of God did what? Came to present themselves before the Lord. Uh -huh. And Satan... And who? And Satan... Satan... Came also among them. So Satan came along with the sons of God. Read on. And the Lord said unto Satan... What did he say? Whence comest thou? Where, where, where you been? Satan, where, where, where have you been? Come on. Then Satan answered the Lord and said... From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. We just read that in 1 Peter 5 and 8. We just go back to that in 1 Peter 5 and 8 again. We just read that. He's going to and fro in the earth, walking up and down in it. Why? Why is he doing that? What is his job? What is Satan doing walking up and down the earth? Read, read that again. The book read of 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Come on. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil... As a roaring lion walketh about, uh -huh. seeking whom he may devour. So it's been laid out plainly, right in our plain sight, that Satan is looking for whom he may devour. What chinks can he enter in through as we all have them? All right? We have to be mindful and make sure that we're vigilant and working on those things within ourselves. So this is just one example in Job. Let's get that in Zechariah chapter 3 and verse 1. Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right, I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom.
My familia is the 12. It's the book of Zechariah, chapter 3 and verse 1. And he showed me Joshua, the high priest, mm -hmm. standing before the angel of the Lord. Who was standing there? Read. Joshua, the high priest, uh -huh. standing before the angel of the Lord. And who else? Read. And Satan. And who? And Satan, standing at his right hand to resist him. What, did, what was Satan's job to do? What was he trying to do? To resist him. So here's another example of Satan. <laughs> Satan is in the midst. He's always there, man. The damn devil is always there because his job is to make sure that we slip and fall, that we don't inherit the kingdom. That's his job, to purge us, to help. Hey, Satan's job is he has an important role when we when we take into account what he's trying to do. If we see what he what his job is, we understand what his job is. It helps us mentally to reform ourselves, to get it right. We got to get it right. Yes, you fall, but you get back up. You must get it. We must get it right before the coming of the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right. Give me that in First Chronicles, chapter 21 and verse one. First Chronicles 21 and verse one. Just hitting a few examples real quick. It's the book of First Chronicles, chapter 21 and verse one. Said, and Satan stood up against Israel. Who did that? Read it again. And Satan, and Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. So David's sin was he numbered Israel. But who provoked him? Read it again. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. Satan stood up against Israel and he provoked David to sin. That's what happened. He provoked David to sin. This is just a, the, another example of Satan being right in the midst of Israel. He's always there to, 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 to cause us to put a stumbling block there to see. Let me see. Let me see if he's going to take it. And sometimes we, gonna, we, we fall. We bust our head straight up. But we got to get back up, realize that, and keep it pushing. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4 again. And we were at verse 13 the first time. Start at verse 4. Matthew 4. And verse 4. It's the book of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 4. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. So we all understood what was taking place right here. Satan was right in the midst again, trying to, trying to tempt the Lord himself. Read it again. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone. Come on. But by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Read on. Then the devil, who, who, who? Then the devil taketh him up into it to, into the holy city, and setteth him upon a pinnacle of the temple, uh -huh. and saith unto him, If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands shall they bear thee up, lest at any time thou dash thy foot against the stone. So we gotta ask ourselves: If Satan was standing at a tempt, our Lord and Savior Himself. We cannot move throughout our day not being aware that Satan is in the midst waiting for an opportunity to cause us to fall. We got to understand that thing. Read on. Jesus said unto him, uh -huh. it is written again, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. You see how the Lord is dealing with Satan? That's how we got to deal. Come on. And the devil taketh him up unto the, an exceeding high mountain and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them. And saith unto him, all these things will I give thee. This is what Satan does to us. I'm gonna give, I'll give you, if you do this thing, I'll give you all this right here. Come on. If thou wilt fall down and worship me, uh -huh. then saith Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan. That's what we got to say. Get thee hence, Satan. Read. For it is written, uh -huh. thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Read. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold, angels came and ministered. Unto him. Now jump to verse. Uh, that, that's all I want on that. That's so again, just another example showing that Satan he's always there, and we must be mindful. First Thessalonians two and verse eighteen. This is our medicine for today. As we go out today, 
And we began our day. Some of us have already begun our day. You're at work now, laboring. You know, you might be in the midst of, uh, uh, you're pretty sure, you're in the midst of heathens. You're in the midst of wicked Jake. We have to be mindful. Satan will use these people. He'll use your mama, your brother, your sister. He'll use anything to try to bring us down. Uh, for what I call, read that. 1 Thessalonians 2.18. The book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. Wherefore we would have come unto you, uh -huh. even I, Paul, once and again, but so this, so this is Paul dealing with the uh, Thessalonians. This is Paul dealing with the Thessalonians. Read it again. I, have, I had to get it. Sorry. <laughs> Read that. Wherefore we would have come unto you, even I, Paul, once and again, uh -huh. but Satan hindered us. Who hindered them? Satan hindered us. Satan hindered us. He will. His job is to be in hindrance. That's his job. Whether it be mama, daddy, auntie, uncle, sister, brother, Satan's job is to cause hindrance as we try to rid ourselves of the old men, of the old women. As we try to purge ourselves and become new creatures in Christ, Satan's job is to hinder us. We must be aware of that thing and take it into account. So how do we combat Satan? How, what, what, is, what, what are the tools necessary to combat and fight these things? Communication. We got to communicate with each other. Give me Hebrews 10, 25. Hebrews 10 and 25. Because when we're amongst each other, we can check each other. We're supposed to want to check each other. We're supposed to want to, to, we're supposed to help fix each other. Explain to each other, hey, bro, I got this going on. I got that going on. I'm going through this. Send a prayer for me. Read that. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verse 25. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. No, you can stay at home and be by yourself. You can, you, can, you, can, you can do this walk all by yourself. You don't need to be with nobody. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Come on. As the manner of some is. That's the manner of some. That's a lot of brothers and sisters out there that say, I don't want to deal with camps. I don't want to be a part of no camp. You don't want to be a part of no camp because you want to continue in your sin. You don't want to be corrected in the things that you know you're doing wrong. You don't want the chinks in your armor to be exposed. Read it again. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. The scripture says not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together. Come on. As the manner of some As is. As the manner of some is. Read. But exhorting one another. Doing what? Exhorting one another. This is how we're going to get better in this walk. By exhorting right. one another. Read. And so much the more. As you see the day approaching. As so much the more as you see the day approaching. In the beginning of the classes, we can see the time approaching. We can see the end is near. We don't know the specific day. We don't know the specific time. We don't need to know it. We just, we see it approaching. So we should be exhorting each other to get it right. We should be in consistent, constant prayer. Three times a day, like Bishop say, study, pray, apply. We should be we should we should be on this as heavy as possible because we see the times that we're living in. We see the day approaching. When you fall, get back up. Don't stay wallowing in, in, in your sin, wallowing in the mud. Get yourself back up, dust yourself back off, and keep it pushing. Rid yourselves, rid ourselves from the things we know that we're dealing with. Read on. Is that it on that? Give me uh Malachi three sixteen. Malachi 3.16, because you got brothers out there that don't want to communicate. You got sisters out there that don't want to communicate. It's indiv individual lights. I ain't never read that in the scriptures. I never read that. Read that. It's the book of Malachi, chapter 3, verse 16. Then they that feared the Lord. They did what? Hold on. It says what now? Then they that feared the Lord. It says then they that feared the Lord, that fear God. Them that fear God, come on. Spake often. No, they spake sometimes. Spake often. No, they, they this says they only speak on the Sabbath. Spake often. To speak often means every day. Every other day at least. Now, can you call every brother and sister in the body? No, you can't. But we have ways, we have means of communication via uh today's modern technology where we're able to communicate with each other and just hey say, hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Hope y'all are doing well. Hey, shalom, brothers and sisters. Hey, I'm gonna send the prayers up for you. Or oh, I'm going, I'm going through a matter, y'all send the prayers up for me. We have ways to communicate a lot, uh uh way way more often than we did during biblical times. There's no excuse. 
It says they that feared, they that feared the Lord spake often one to another. Read on. And the Lord hearkened. Oh, so the, the Lord is he's listening to that? And the Lord hearkened, come on. And heard it. Uh huh. And a book of remembrance. A was, what? A book of remembrance. So when we speak often to one another, when we're exhorting one another, when we are encouraging one another in this truth, a book of remembrance, come on. Was written uh -huh. before him for them that feared the Lord. So there's a book written on our actions, on how we deal with each other, on how we exhort each other, on how we show charity to each other and love for one another. These things help heal the wounds of brothers and sisters to cause them to, you know, cl close up some of those chinks that are in their armor. Things, these emotional uh, uh, aspects that Satan can use to split a relationship in half, to cause a brother or sister to go off on one another. These things the Lord has put in place for us to be able to deal with each other, to build the unity and camaraderie of the brotherhood, of the nation. All right? Give me uh, Hebrews 13 and 3. Me more than medicine be uh, pretty sure that time be flying. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 3. Hold on, let me get that, let me get that real quick. All right, go ahead. The book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verse 3. Remember them that are in bonds. Remember what? Them that are in bonds. Come on. As bound with them. Uh-huh. And them which suffer adversity. Uh-huh. As being yourselves also in the body. So we got to, that's the thing. When we read Malachi 3.16, when we read Hebrews 10.20, we are one body. We are one body. One body in Christ. We have to remember to speak with one another, to build one another up, and remember those that are going through these different things. This That's is the, right. the condition of the battle on earth is for us to combat sin. And we need each other to do that. All right? We need each other because the depths of Satan is as deep and as far as a person is willing to go. And Satan understands how to use these things against a brother or sister. Give me that in uh, 2 Ezra 7. 56 and 57. It's the book of Second Address, chapter 7 and verse 56. It says, for while we lived and committed iniquity. While we did what? For while we lived and committed iniquity. Sin, come on. We considered not that we should begin to suffer for it after death. That's the thing that we don't think about. And we got to think about that we will begin to suffer for it after death. Come on. Then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle. The condition of the battle is we got to fight against sin. We got to fight against the darkness of this world, this gross darkness that we've been put in. We got to fight against it. And we must endure, not just fight. We have to fight and continue to endure. That's why when you fall, you got to get back up and keep fighting and overcome. That's what this whole battle is about. Fighting until the end and overcoming, enduring until the end. Is that on that? Read on. This is a condition of the battle, uh -huh. which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Shall do what? Shall fight. Come on. That if he be overcome. That if he be overcome. He shall suffer as thou hast said. If you be overcome, you're going to suffer as the Lord has said. If you are overcome in your iniquity, if you are overcome in your sin, come on, you will suffer as he said. Read. But if he get the victory. But if you get the victory over sin, if you conquer the things that you know you're dealing with if you overcome the things we are dealing with come on he shall receive the thing that i say he shall receive eternal life the thing that he said read on for this is the life whereof moses spake unto the people while he lived uh-huh saying choose the life choose what choose the life uh-huh that thou mayest live we must choose the life of christ that we may live brothers and sisters we must choose to follow christ we must choose to keep these commandments and fight and endure until the end uh first peter 1 13 first peter 1 13 they make hold on yeah read that first peter 1 13 it's the book of first peter chapter 1 verse 13 wherefore gird up the loins of your mind uh-huh be sober. Gird up the loins of your mind and be sober. Build up. Bishop did a masterful class, a masterful class this past Sabbath about being master builders, becoming master builders. 
We got to build up, gird up, build up the loins of our mind. Come on. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus. This is why we got to continue to fight. We got to continue to, uh, uh, how, when, when you weld, we got to weld. What's that? What's it called? I forget what it's called when they do that little welding thing. Them welders know what I'm talking about. When they take the, uh, when they take the little, little, little stick or whatever you call it, big, and you pop, you pop, you, 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 you mint, and you fill that hole up. That's what we gotta be doing. We gotta see the chinks in our armor, and we gotta, we gotta melt that thing back together. That's right. This is how we're gonna be able to stand against the wiles of Satan, the depths of Satan. Read that again. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Uh huh. Be sober. Be clear-minded. Come on. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought. It says, you. and hope, and hope to the end, to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. That's what we hope for. That's what we we have to understand. We have to know in our minds that I'm gonna get the kingdom. I'm gonna get not Lord's will. I get. The, I'm gonna get the kingdom. It's already set up for me, and I will endure. I will fight until the end. I'm trying to get through it because I got a few more minutes. Let's get to uh, Romans chapter 12. Romans 12. Romans 12. Romans 12. Start at verse 1. This is the book of Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Mm -hmm. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. So that's our job. We have to present our bodies a living sacrifice. Come on. Holy. Holy without sin. Come on. Acceptable unto God. Uh-huh. Which is your reasonable service. That's it. This is your reasonable service. This is your, your reasonable service is to ward off sin, to be holy, and to become an acceptable and living sacrifice for God. Verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. And don't be conformed to this world. Come on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Be what? Transformed by the renewing of your mind. How do we re how do we do that? By keeping the commandments. We must put the commandments in our mind. Come on. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What's the will of God? Let's get that real quick. What is the will of God? What is the will of God? The book of Psalms, chapter 40 and verse 8. Come on. I delight to do thy will, oh my God. We got to have a delight in this thing. This cannot be a, a burdensome task for us. How can it be burdensome for us to keep the commandments, to do the right thing? It can't be burdensome. We have, we, we have, we have, America has made us think that keeping the commandments is hard. America and the ways of this life have has caused us to, to be delusional enough to think that there is something better than keeping the commandments. There is not. Read it again. I delight to do thy will, O oh my God. Read. Yea, thy law is within my heart. So the will of God is to keep his laws. Go back to that in Romans and read that one more time. The book of Romans, chapter 12 and verse 2. Come on. And be not conformed to this world. So we must not conform to this world. Read on. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renew our minds with the commandments of God. Read. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. All right, from there, let me get uh, 2 Peter 2 and verse 20. 2 Peter 2 and 20, a couple more scriptures and we out of here. The book of 2 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 20. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. And what? And overcome. Read it from the top again. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world. So it says, for if after they have escaped the pollutions of this of the world. Come on. Through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior so Jesus. So we escaped through that knowledge of through that knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Come on. They are again entangled thereon. And then we get entangled again into that life. Come on. And overcome. And overcome, meaning you don't fight the battle to get out. You don't try. Like you just fall back there and you stay there. We can't do that. You can't get this knowledge right here and then decide to just fall down and stay the hell down. 
No, you got to keep pushing. Dust yourself off, get up, and push again. Come on. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. So if you stay there, that your latter end is worse than the beginning. Come on. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Uh -huh. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb. The dog is turned to his own vomit again. Uh-huh, read on. And the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. So you don't want to fall that low and stay there again. We have to learn to turn away from our transgressions. We got to learn to turn away from sin. We got to learn to mend up these wounds and to keep pushing forward because Satan is lurking to keep us in that mire. He's lurking to keep us, to keep us dealing with the vomit that we came from. And we can't stay there. We can't do that. Uh, Ezekiel 18, That's 29. Right. It's the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 29. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. What, what Israel say? Read it again. Yet saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. This is black people in America scattered abroad. The commandments ain't right. Why I can't smoke weed? the hell the commandments ain't right you mean to tell me if i got a problem with him it's okay for me it's not okay for me to dislike him the commandments of the lord ain't right read it again yet say it the house of israel yet say black people come on the way of the lord is not equal we say the way of the lord is not equal come on oh house of israel are not my ways equal i say are not my ways equal i allow I, I gave you repentance now if that ain't if that ain't equal i don't know i don't know what is because I could have just murdered you. I could have just killed you. This could you you could you could just sin and, and and be dead right after. But the Lord is merciful. Come on. Are not your ways unequal? But our ways are unequal. Why? Because our ways are wrong. Read. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Uh huh. Everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Uh huh. Repent. What did God say? Repent. And do what? And turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Come on. So iniquity shall not be your rule. So the Lord is equal because he's given us an opportunity to repent and turn from our transgressions that iniquity be not our ruin. Come on. Cast away from you all your transgressions. This is what we got to do, brothers and sisters. Cast away all the transgressions. Come on. Whereby ye have transgressed. This is how you're going to close up them chinks in that armor. Read. And make you a new heart. Make you a new heart through the, the keeping of the commandments. Read. And a new spirit. And a new spirit. The Lord is equal. He gave you, he gave you an opportunity to get you a new spirit, a new mind and a new spirit. Come on. For why will ye die? Why are you going to die? Meddling in the sin, meddling with our iniquities uh, uh, and, and co consistently dealing with our transgressions is going to cause death. Death. Eternal death. I'm talking about that, that, that second death. We don't want that. You don't want that thing. Come on. For why will ye die? God says, why will you die? Come on. O house of Israel. O house of Israel. Come on. For I have no pleasure in the death of him that dies. See, I ain't got no death. I ain't got no pleasure in your death. Read. Say it, the Lord God. Come on. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live. So we got to turn ourselves and live. Turn ourselves and live by looking at our faults, looking at our ways, and, and acknowledging our ways. And repent and turn away from that thing. Last scripture. Give me Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians 6 and 11 through 16. It's the book of Ephesians chapter 6 verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. No, put on some of it. Put on the whole armor of God. You got to put on that whole armor of God. Read. That ye may be. That ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. This is how we're going to be able to fight against Satan. When you put on that whole armor of God, you put on that light, you put on the commandments, you put on Christ. Christ is your armor and protection. Come on. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Because the things that we that we fight with, it's not flesh and blood. This is not a physical war. This is not a carnal war. Come on. But against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. Come on. Against spiritual wickedness. Against what? Spiritual wickedness uh -huh. in high places. This is what we're fighting against because mentally we think we all right. A lot of times we going we done been in the truth three, four, five, six, ten years, and we think it's we we good. We not good. Satan understands 
where he can get you at. It's just a matter of time. Remember, it says he left Christ for a season. He left for a season. But he's coming back. He's coming back to try you again. He's coming back to try us all. Read. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. So we must be prepared. Take on the whole armor of God. Come on. That ye may be able to, to withstand in the evil day. That we may be able to withstand in the evil day. Read. And having done all to stand. And having done all to stand. Stand there, for Stand there, come on. Having your loins girt having about. Having your minds girt about. With truth. Uh-huh. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. Having on that breastplate of righteousness, come on. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. And our feet shod with the preparation of this gospel. Read. Of the gospel of peace. Read. Above all. Above all. Taking the shield of faith. Uh-huh. Taking the shield of faith. Christ, come on. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts. So Christ is that is that shield that's going to allow us to quench all those fiery darts that are trying to pierce our armor. Come on. Quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Read on. And take the helmet of salvation. Uh-huh. And the sword of the spirit. Uh-huh. Which is the word of God. Which is what? Which is the word of God. Read on. Praying always. No, pray sometimes. Praying always. Come on. With all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Uh-huh. And watching. Here it is again. It has that watching. We've been reading that all class. And watching, come on. And watching thereunto. Uh-huh. With all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So this is how we're going to be able to quench those darts. All right, so with that, this has been Mid-Morning Medicine. My name is Officer Kalaya, IUIC Columbia. I pray you brothers and sisters got something out of the class. Let's always remember Satan is lurking in the background and seeking for us to fall, all right? And if you fall, you get back up, you keep pushing, you keep fighting. The kingdom of heaven is yours if you want it, all right? With that, we say shalom, most high in Christ bless. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.